first one I want to talk about is Red Thread. This is the one I've gotten the most emails on. So, you know, I just got to assume it's something to do with this year's super long, long periods of rain because, uh, you know, Red Thread does tend to like a little bit cooler temperatures. I will tell you that it's mostly a disease of cool season turf, so perennial rye, Kentucky blue, and fescue. Um, I don't know if I've heard very many or anyone talk about it in warm season turf. And the warm season turf, of course, would be zoysia, St. Augustine, centipede, Bermuda, and of course my favorite, Bahia grass, which Bahia, I'm not going to mention you at all because I don't know that you actually get any lawn diseases, Bahia, so you don't expect a lot of here from Bahia this week. But either way, this one, Red Thread, cool season turf mostly. Now, here is the thing with that. Red Thread is a disease of the leaf. It does not get into the crowns for the most part, and it does not get into the roots and affect them. So therefore, it's only a disease of the leaf. And one of the things that you know happens when you hit your lawn with high nitrogen fertilizer is it grows very quickly. Well, what's growing? Those grass blades, and they are growing up and they are growing quick. So red thread can be pushed out with nitrogen. Now, I don't want you to think that nitrogen on a diseased lawn is going to correct it overnight. And we're going to talk about setting expectations too, because red thread, while it doesn't necessarily always cause long-term damage, even that is defined differently. You know, what is long-term damage? Well, I don't know. You might, if it's a really bad, if you have a severe outbreak or a severe red thread problem in your lawn, it might take six, eight, or even 12 weeks for it to recover, especially if you're coming into summer and we hit a two or three week dry spell where all of the turf is stunted, you have to realize it can't recover if it can't even grow healthy. So you always have to set that expectation right. And I'm telling you that when I say push the disease out with high nitrogen fertilizer, it doesn't mean that you're going to get the same results from the fertilizer that you get when you put it down when there's no disease. It's not like I put it down and 10 days later, boom, it's dark green. No, dead grass is dead grass. It doesn't just go away right away. So set your expectation right. And and I would rather you push it out in spoon feed doses. And we're going to talk about what spoon feeding means and and fertilizer rates and nitrogen a little bit today. We're going to go down some long roads, so please hang in there. But you want to push it out with dosing of fertilizer. So I'm talking half to three quarter pound now, half to three quarter pound in 12 days, half to three quarter pound in 12 days, really closer to that half pound of nitrogen. Low rates every 12 days. Bing, 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 bing push them in there. Just get a cycle of growth going, like growing out bad hair. It's almost if you could grow out a bad hair job faster by eating something, you would continually eat it until the hair grew out. And that's what I would want you to do here with this particular disease of red thread is nice, small doses of nitrogen, half pound, maybe up to three quarter pound is fine every 12 days. Now, you're not going to have to do that for too long, as long as you can keep irrigating. However, if you get a dry spell and you're not able to irrigate, you're going to have to go off of that process. But that's the main one. Now, if you also do feel like, hey, my red thread's real bad, I need to do something about it, then you can go ahead and apply some liquid propiconazole. That's really going to be the best. We used to call that Banner Max, and I would spray Banner Max. I did not see too much red thread when I lived in Northwest Indiana, but we would have uh, some outbreaks yearly that would come in, and I would always just go out and spray with Banner Max. It's propiconazole. You can actually get the Bio Advanced propiconazole and hose in sprayers. Now I think it's 20 bucks for 5,000 square feet. That's going to work great. The reason you want to use a liquid is because, again, this is a disease of the leaf. And you'll see, sometimes you can see the pink mycelium in there. Or they're called sclerotia or all these different terms. But if you do want to spray it, use a liquid so it coats where the disease is present, which is in the leaf structure and in the leaf zone or in the blade zone or whatever you want to call it up in there. So use a liquid. This, these propiconazole products can be applied every 10 to 14 days or 14 days, I believe it is. So you could just do your, your spoon feed of nitrogen and your propiconazole at the same time. But again, I would ask you not to go with the disease route or the disease control route, the propiconazole route, if you don't have to, because... All fungicides are also, in a sense, growth regulators because that's one of the ways that they can help attack the disease, and that will have an effect on the turf. Again, everything is give and take. Just because it says you can spray this on your turf, it doesn't mean the turf won't have a reaction to it. Think of that again. I always put this to analogies of of us and humans taking different drugs that were prescribed from doctors. There's always a side effect. 
Now, some turf will be affected by that side effect in different ways than others, and your soil can even contribute to that. But I would just say don't throw down the propaganazole if you don't think you necessarily need it. Go with the working it out through nitrogen. There are also other things you can do. You're going to hear me recommend these throughout, and that is micronutrients. Micronutrients support everything else. So applying micronutrients, we have our microgreen product, which also does have some potassium content in it because potash potassium is also good to aid in disease recovery, and then all of the micros will help. And then next, you want to use sea kelp and humic acid. Sea kelp because it stimulates gibberellins, which stimulate rooting and fresh rooting because that's the other thing we want is we want to get some fresh rooting. Now, it's not the same type of stimulation or push that nitrogen does. This is more of a root and shoot stimulation because, again, more root and shoot. We can support more top growth and more health. And then we want the humic acid because it's a chelator for everything else, and it helps to oxygenate the soil, which, again, is good for those roots because everything up top is where it's being affected. So let's make sure the roots are real strong as we're pushing through the nitrogen, as we're trying to push fresh growth and push it out. Those are all the things that you can do to help yourself recover from the red thread. But again, the fertilizing piece of it is the best. Now, just go to the store and get what you want. If you got Carbon X, which we do have in stock now on the site, Carbon X would work great for that. The idea being, get whatever it is that you can and put it down. Get Scott's Turf Builder, I don't care, Summer Guard, whatever it is, put it down and get some nitrogen on there. Low dose, low amounts every 12 days or so. That's really the best way to go. And then the final piece of this goes back to your expectations on how long it's going to take to cure it. And I want you to think about that. It's, it's these areas of dead grass. What can you do to help things move along? Well, you could use the dethatch product. And what dethatch does is it brings, it stimulates the microbes, it's got molasses in it, to feed on dead grass. Well, listen, dead grass can be thatch that's built up over years, but dead grass can be dead grass that died from a disease. And by the way, dead grass in those areas can harbor spores and it can harbor more parts of the disease that can stay moist and can be moved and, and can be you know transferred around. So by using the dethatch to burn out all the dead stuff, you can actually be burning out habitat for the disease spores. Is that the right word, habitat? You, uh, anyway, you get the idea, you get the analogy, you burn that out of there. I've been using this on Dollar Spot, and we'll talk about that as it comes up in my lawn exclusively. I just let the patches die from the Dollar Spot, I hose it down with the dethatch, and then my stolons just push in fresh, and I don't notice, and I've done the same thing in the zoysia too. It works really good. Little dead spots in the zoysia from Dollar Spots or Dollar Spot, I just hose it in there with the dethatch, and a couple of days later, the stolons or the rhizomes will move right back in there because they're just super small spots that you got to get to pretty early. So lots of fun there. But the idea is have some patience. Let the lawn heal up. It's just like when you get a cut on your skin, it doesn't heal up right away. Some will heal up faster than others. Sometimes you even have scarring there for quite a bit of time for a while. So that's just the idea. It kind of works the same way. <laughs> 